Welcome to SunnyDaySTamping.com. I'm Julie Baca. We are going to be making a really simple fun fold card, but it's so pretty, so elegant, perfect for the holidays. I'm going to show you a simple way to make it and then give you some ideas for stepping it up if you want to um, add just a couple more things. So I hope you like that variety. Now, um, you don't have to worry about any of the measurements because every video I put out here on YouTube, I have a corresponding blog post. It's linked in the description of the video. You can just click it, go right over there to find all the measurements. You'll see additional photos just to give you some extra ideas. Um, and you can also um, see the full supply list there and purchase all the supplies from there. If if you want your cards to look just like mine, um, but you can always adapt to what you have at home too. So, all right, let's get started. So here's our really simple fun fold. This flap opens up to reveal this great, um, image on the inside, which is just an unusual shape. So I think whenever you do something just unexpected, you automatically get that wow. Even though this is so, so simple to make, it's really just stamps, ink, and paper with some ribbon on the front. So I'm going to be using the Christmas Classics stamp set just because it's got some awesome, just great classic holiday um, uh, <laughs> sayings. And I love the cursive with the bold all cap print so great and then just some foliage i mean this is fantastic and i love this little um this little line of dots with the corner that allows you to kind of set off your um your focal point image which i think is just great and you'll be able to use this year round um by putting other other sentiments on the inside of that. Now, one thing to note about this stamp set, it is in this um, Christmas mini catalog, which is starting Tuesday, November 21st. Everything in this catalog is either, well, not everything. There are a few things that will carry over, but most of the things in here are retiring. So you can get some awesome deals, but that also means if you like love this set, um, get it as soon as possible because none of that stuff's going to be restocked because it's all retiring. So, but I hope you can find some great deals in there too. So this is kind of the quick and easy version of this card, just stamps ink and paper with some ribbon. I, but I'm going to show you two other ways to make this card just if you have the time and the supplies to step it up and i'm going to show you how to make the you know this most stepped up version so that you can adjust for what you have so the next number two way to do this is to heat emboss um your label that just gives it that pop and i don't know if you can see the heat embossing just gives it that shiny puffed up um, lettering or whatever you put on the image. The next part would be to use the heat emboss, but add a um, layer of embossing that just makes that pop out. So awesome. This is going to prevent you from writing right here, um, which you don't really want to on any of these. You don't want to write below here because then you'll see it. Um, but what you can do is on the back, just add a panel of the very vanilla um, to the back so that you can write if you want to write an extra message. Although you'll have a chance just right up here to write your um, just all the names of the people in your family. <laughs> So you all know, I like to keep my supply list low. So we're going to use this one stamp set for all the versions. Um, and I'm only going to use three colors of ink and the coordinating card stocks. So shaded spruce, real red, early espresso for any of the brown. Oh, that one doesn't have any brown there. Um, any of the brown images, I really like that. But then a crumb cake um, card stock. And then this is a combo pack of ribbon. It comes together, which is so great. I love that it's thick and thin. This one has the stitching of white, so it's got like a different texture. That just makes things automatically interesting. This, this will be great for Valentine's Day cards too. So this is great for, um, you know, not just the holidays, which that just automatically gives you extra value. Now to make this card, you're going to need to get, um, have the heat embossing um, products, which are, there's really not that much and it lasts you forever. So if you like the look of heat embossing, that would be a good investment. And then on this one, we're just going to add a, the Timber 3D embossing folder and you will need a stamp and cut and emboss machine to use uh, the folder. But if you have that, man, just throw one of these in your cart and you can just add that really extra something on there. 
So we're gonna start by doing our stamping and we're gonna stamp the inside of our card first. I'm gonna use stamp on top of my stamp and pierce mat. I just um, get just a better impression and uh, a higher, higher rate of success with this. And just put a sentiment right on this little piece and then take some of the foliage um, and just put it in the corner here making sure to stamp off your paper. That just makes it so much more interesting. And now you're gonna take this piece, which is kind of the bottom section of that card, and we're gonna put foliage in this top corner here, not extending too far down the card, because we don't really want this to show. We want it to kind of be a surprise when they open the card. And then there are a couple little berries in this set. So we're just gonna add just a couple, making sure these also go off the paper like that. We'll add some here too. And now while you've got your um, you, all your inks out, go ahead and grab your envelope so that that does not go naked through the mail. And it just, I don't know, it just adds that little extra, like this is so special when they get it out of the mailbox. So I'm just gonna put a little th something on the back and I'm gonna add it also to the front of the card here, just in the corner, just the same thing we did on the, on the card. Like you don't have to invent all kinds of stuff, just transfer that same image over like that. Now this is the part that flaps over. It's four by eight scored at five and a quarter. All those measurements are on my blog post and there's a link in the description of this video that you can click and go directly over the blog post. You'll get all the measurements for um, all the papers in this card and uh, actually every video I put out I've got a blog post because I want you to make these at home. Also for my email subscribers, they'll get this print and make project sheet, which has all the measurements, some written instructions um, and links to, to the video and everything. So if you want to be uh, get that, make sure to get on my email list. So that's it. We're just, um, you know, doing foliage around around this flap and you don't have to worry about stamping you know, over stamping on there because that's just going to be glued onto the back. And then you're just going to take your bone folder and um, fold that over like that. And then this empty part in the middle, that tag that we're going to make is going to go right there. So now if you're going to make the simple version of this card, make sure to cut out a piece of very vanilla and stamp on it. But we are going to do the heat embossing because I want to show you how to do that. So it's important when you heat emboss to use this anti-static little pouch. This is an embossing buddy. Um, it'll keep the um, finger oils from your fingerprints won't attract the, the little uh, embossing powder. So now we're going to use Versamark ink and we're going to just take a sentiment and stamp it directly in the middle like that. And then we're going to use that line of dots from the stamp set and just make that edging all the way around. And I'm just lining it up along the side of this square to make sure that it's um, that it's even. And I'm just kind of stamping in the middle there. Then it's got this awesome corner piece which is gonna connect those dots to look like a frame. And man, I just love that. You're gonna be able to use this for so many different things. All right, so once we have all that done, now you're gonna grab your embossing powder I keep mine in a tray like this, but, and then you're just gonna pour it all over your image, making sure it's all covered, and then just tap it off like that. Now, one little tip I wanna show you, when you are heat embossing with a tiny piece of paper, man, that is gonna get a little toasty on the fingers. So I got a tip, grab yourself a laundry clothespin and I clip it onto another piece of sturdy cardstock or you could use like a cereal box or whatever. Um, and then we're going to clip this on the clothespin and that is going to extend my hand way far away from where the heat is going this this part really isn't necessary but i like it so that the heat isn't you know going all over the place um and so let's watch this magic So what I couldn't say why that machine was going is you just kind of move the heat around and as soon as you turn it, see it turn white, you move to the next section. It just turns a really deep white. Now I want to uh, note a couple of mistakes that I made. I left it too long 
right here, um, I left the heat on too long. So you can see it got nice and white and then it started to separate and does not look so clear. I just left it on there too long. And it's also, it also like flattens out when you keep the heat on too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on to the little uh, base so that we know this part is completely done. So now we're gonna bring in that combo pack of ribbon and I am going to line it up right at the one and a half mark. So it's gonna extend from the one and a half to the two and just lay this flat on here. Then I'm gonna take my card base and line it up along the line there. And so because my ribbon is lined up, um, I know it's going to be straight on my uh, card base. Also, I'm just going to pull this so I don't waste that much ribbon. And so I'm just going to fold this over and tape it. Then we're just going to cut this here, fold it over and tape it. It's just the easiest way to do a ribbon. And then this is also going to give us a really sturdy base for adding this part. This is the hard part. This is when you have to actually tie a bow and you <laughs> you guys know I struggle with this. So, but the one thing that makes it easy is this is nice and sturdy now. So you're just gonna slide this under here and tie yourself a bow. Wow, I did that pretty good, pretty well. I did it pretty quickly. Okay, so the trick was I was not trying to scrimp on my ribbon and I gave myself plenty of room. But one thing is keep it attached to your roll. That way you can use a lot of ribbon, but then you're not going to waste that much um, So, because then you can just cut it off instead of trying to guess how much you need. Oh, that's going to be too much. Let me cut that tail just a little shorter. Okay, so there, that was so easy. And now this is ugly, but that is why we have this. And honestly, I should have glued this on to here before I added that little knot of a ribbon because it, now it's not laying flat. <laughs> but um, so when you do it, don't do it in the order I just did it. So now if you're making the, the easy version of this card, go ahead and glue this on and glue it right onto your card base. And then all you would need to do is just tuck that under there. But we are going to take this. This is the, the third hardest uh, level. We are going to uh, dry emboss this one. Embossing folders are incredibly easy to use for the effect that they give. I just love it. So with your embossing folder, do you see that line? Line up your paper on that line. That way you know that the image that's going to be embossed on there is straight. And I just curved it. Hold on, it just shifted. Let's put it back. There you go. And then clamp it shut. Now, when you run this through the machine, you want the folded end going through the machine this way and this, this open end pointing out. So folded in, in. That's just gonna preserve the life of your folder and your machine. Okay, this is my favorite part. I love opening these up. Even if I've done it a million times, it's just like, man, look at that. I love the the wood embossing with the with the uh, foliage. I think it's like a perfect pairing. Okay, that's it. So even like the most fancy version of this card does not take very long at all. So you're just gonna glue that in there and then take your focal point, flip it over. You're gonna put glue just in this corner here, right there, and then just tuck it under your ribbon. So it looks like it's attached to the ribbon, but it's not. And have it at an angle and just press down on it till it is uh, stuck. And there, there you go. Okay, I've got a couple other examples to show. So this was our simplest version. And here's another just idea for a simple version. Um, I used the brown uh, for the early espresso for the words. And then of course, you know, you make a custom uh, envelope, that's gonna make anything look fancy. And then here's what it looks like, stepped up just with the um, the heat embossing. Oh, and here are the different, I used a different foliage from that stamp set. And these are our most fancy version. You've got peace on earth, deck the halls as your <laughs> your options for the inside of there. They, you, they also have just um, other words that you can put on the inside. I hope you give this really easy fun fold card a try.
The holiday items I used to make this card are actually retiring. They are on sale now. So if you love those, go grab them today. You can follow the link in the description of this video to the blog post to get the full list of supplies. You can also reach out to me. I'm so happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have fun making this card and have a wonderful holiday season. See you next week.